Hi, thank you for joining this on-demand webinar. I'm Alexis Tessier, Product Marketing Manager at Lucid. In this session, we will cover the Atlas Sphere, the latest addition to the Atlas camera series, equipped with the Sony Sensware image sensors. We'll cover briefly who is Lucid Vision Labs, we'll discuss the fundamentals of Sphere imaging, we'll detail the Sony Sensware technology, and illustrate it with a few use case examples. Finally, we'll highlight the uniqueness of the Atlas Sphere IP67 cameras, and discuss the system configuration required for Sphere imaging. A few words on Lucid Vision Labs. Lucid is a Canadian company with its headquarters in the Vancouver area in British Columbia, and offices spread all over the world in Germany, China, Japan, and Taiwan. There are five main cameras families in the Lucid lineup, covering from 1 gigabit to 5 gigabit and 10 gigabit bandwidth, all of them based on the Ethernet technology. As of today, there is over 85 unique camera models in Lucid portfolio, with all products designed and manufactured in Canada. Let's look at shortwave infrared and where it fits in the infrared spectrum. The infrared spectrum is comprised of near infrared, shortwave infrared, SWIR, medium wave infrared, and long wave infrared. The SWIR range extends from roughly 1000 nanometer to 2500 nanometers. This is beyond the sensitivity limit of silicon based image sensor. And to be sensitive in the SWIR range, special compound semiconductors have been developed like indium gallium arsenide, in gas, or mercury cadmium telluride, MCT. Here we see a comparison of a standard CMOS image sensor, standard visible image sensor, sensitive from 300 to 900 nanometers, and an in-gas sensor, which starts at around 950 and goes all the way to 1650 nanometers, or 1700 nanometers. Now let's compare visible images versus SWIR and long wave infrared image. The wavelengths in the SWIR region, especially from 900 to 1700 nanometers, behave similarly to visible lights, meaning that most of the image content is based on reflectance, reflecting the incoming lights, as opposed to radiation, thermal based radiation for the long wave infrared image. As a result, conventional glass optics can be used for SWIR imaging, of course, treated and coated to have high transmission and good sharpness in the SWIR region. And high resolution and high speed sensor can be designed by adapting a very similar architecture to standard CMOS sensor. So the same kind of drive modes such as binning can be adapted to a SWIR image sensor. The core principle behind SWIR imaging is to leverage the different properties of matter with various wavelengths. Depending on the incoming light wavelengths, the light can be either absorbed, reflected, or transmitted. With prior knowledge of the spectral signature of the target object under various wavelengths, we can design imaging system that inspect in very narrow band in the sphere range and be used to differentiate objects that look similar under visible light. This results in high contrast images that are well suited to apply the same image processing techniques as with a standard camera. One example of those different properties under swear range is shown here with the absorption spectrum of liquid water. Here we see in the highlighted area that cover the swear range from 1000 to 2000 nanometers, that there are clear peaks and valleys that can be distinguished in the spectral range. This will result in either absorption or transmission at very specific wavelengths that can be used to highlight presence of water in a material, for instance. Now let's have a closer look at the pixel technology required for sphere imaging. Sphere sensors have been around for a while, but so far they've been held back by their larger pixel size, which in turn leads to large die size and overall high system cost. To overcome the challenges in miniaturization, Sony developed the Sensware technology to offer compact sensor with high resolution, 
and capable of imaging from the visible spectrum to the swear wavelengths. The first step to do so was to improve the top layer, the indium phosphorus layer, and make it thinner to allow more light, including visible light, to reach the lower in gas layer. The second step was to develop a new bonding technique with copper to copper connection that result in smaller pixel pitch, smaller pixel size of only 5 micrometers, and allow high resolution sensors in smaller sensor size. Here we see the quantum efficiency of the sensory image sensor compared to a standard CMOS and an in-gas sensor. We can see that the sensory is sensitive from 400 nanometers all the way to 1700 nanometers, effectively covering the visible plus swear in infrared range. In addition to this, it's highly sensitive in the near infrared regions where very few sensors have high quantum efficiency currently. This sensitivity in visible and swear infrared can allow using a single camera, whereas before a visible camera and a swear camera were required. This is especially helpful when working with complex optical systems, such as telecentric lenses, or microscopy type of application. Furthermore, there is a lot of potential application that may be developed leveraging this high quantum efficiency in the near infrared region in life science or other fields. Let's illustrate the various wear property with a few use case examples. In this one, we're looking at fruit, apples in this case. Under visible light, it's difficult to notice any bruise or defects, whereas once we inspect with uh, correct swear infrared wavelengths, the bruises become clearly visible. This is because moisture accumulates where the fruit was bruised, and by inspecting it under swear wavelengths and illumination, it makes it easy to detect. Now we can look at the various, how it looks under different wavelengths, at the top, the full color image, then white light imaging, 940 nanometers near infrared, and from then on, starting with the swear range at 1050 nanometers, 1200, 1300, 1450, and 1550 nanometers. The object appears quite different depending on the wavelengths, and this can be used to detect various properties, so not only bruises, but also finish and other texture or other internal properties of the fruit can be analyzed and measured. Another use case for sway imaging is foreign material detection. In this instance, we're looking at coffee beans with a few contaminants mixed in, small stones. Under visible light, they appear quite similar. They have same shape, same size, and uh, mostly similar gray level, whereas Inspecting them at 1450 nanometers, it becomes quite visible. Now we can look under various wavelengths how this scene looks like. One more classic use case for sway imaging is in the semiconductor industry inspecting silicon wafer. As we discussed earlier, silicon becomes transparent in the sway range. On the left hand side, we have this silicon wafer with visible wavelengths, white LED light, and it's fully reflective. And on the right hand side, we see it under 1200 nanometers wavelengths where it becomes transparent and we can clearly see what's behind the wafer. This can be used for inspecting for defects and delaminations and looking at the properties of the wafer overall. Again, we compare it under various wavelengths. Another example, in the packaging industries, many plastics that appear opaque under the visible light become transparent around 1400-1500 nanometers wavelengths. Here we see those small packaging containing gummy bears that are transparent in the sphere range and we can clearly detect and count individually those gummy bears, whereas in the visible light they are fully opaque. Here we see the scene under different wavelengths. The system setup depends on what kind of properties of light we're trying to inspect. In this case, it's transmission. So we're using backlight, sunlight in this case, 
but this will depend on the actual property and the actual uh, spectral signature that we are interested in. One more example, in material inspection, here we have flour, baking soda and sugar that all appear very similar under visible wavelengths. But as soon as we inspect them with short wave infrared illumination, they are quite clearly different. And again, comparing at various wavelengths and at the top, the full color image. So far, we've been discussing single narrowband inspection type of system, but leveraging this visible sphere image sensor and extended sensitivity, multispectral analysis system can be designed. The first step is to acquire several pictures using the camera onboard sequencer, each with a different illumination and a different wavelength. This can be used usually in a controlled light environment. We will switch between several narrowband illumination. Potentially, this can be used with mechanical filter that are moved in front of the cameras between each images. Here we acquired a bunch of images covering from the visible spectrum, red, green, and blue, all the way to the far end of the sphere range. At first, we can just take the first red, green, and blue and combine them to make a full color image. Using this monochrome V-Sway sensor, we can actually acquire color images. And we can extract it to look at the defect in a very specific wavelength, in this case, 1300 nanometers. But we can do more with multispectral system. Multiple wavelengths could be combined using mathematical operator to design typically a vegetation index in a phenotyping use case or something similar for agriculture or life science. Now let's talk about the Atlas Square that Lucid designed. For this, we use the platform developed for the Atlas 5 gigi IP67. However, we decided to use it as a 1 gigabit version, since the sensor do not require higher bandwidth. We adapted both IMX990, 1.3 megapixel, half-inch type sensor sensor, and the IMX991, the 0.3 megapixel, VGA type quarter inch image sensor. Here we can see the extended sensitivity. Those are actual measurements, EMBA 1288 measurements made with the Atlas Sphere cameras from 400 nanometers all the way to 1700 nanometers. The camera is IP67 and GigiVision compliant with PoE plus and an extended temperature range. The sensor we used are the version that are equipped with the thermoelectric coupling components. To make best use of the built-in thermoelectric cooling, the camera needs to be designed accordingly. An internal heat sink is attached to the sensor, and this heat sink is connected to the aluminum case to radiate heat effectively. This results in lower image sensor temperature, and in turn, lower noise, lower dark current, and better image quality. The Atlas Sphere is part of the Lucid Factory Tough series, which are built for 24-7 operation in challenging industrial environments, which provide shock and vibration resistance, EMC industrial immunity, dust proof and water resistant housing, IP67, with single cable operation, both data and power delivered over a single 100 meter Ethernet cable, secured connector M12 for data and power, M8 for GPIO, and strong and lightweight die cast aluminium housing with a compact size of 60 by 60 by 65 millimeter, which is unique for a Swear tech equipped camera. As each product in the Atlas series, the Atlas Swear is actively aligned at the time of sensor mounting to adjust for camera rotation, sensor tilt, and sensor centering. This provides imaging with good clarity and lower distortion. Now for the overall vision system configuration, in addition to the SWIR enabled camera, um, the system should use components fitting for this purpose. 
to begin with the lens, either sphere of or this sphere lenses. If the application calls for inspecting in one specific narrow wavelength, a sphere lens can fit. It needs to be treated to be to have high transmission in this wavelength range and good focus, good strong sharpness. But it does need to be adjusted across the full wavelength range. If the application is more of a multispectral type of application and needs to acquire both visible and various sphere narrow bands, then a V-sphere lens is required. This lens will provide constant focus across the full wavelengths and good transmissions. To realize this spectral selection, then optical filter will be attached to the camera, most likely narrowband or also multipass filter or custom filter with a bespoke transmission spectrum. And the illumination, more and more narrowband LED lighting are used, selecting for the desired wavelengths. As an alternative, wideband quartz halogen light can be used, which will emit light across the full visible and sphere spectrum. Finally, the Atlas Sphere camera can be used with the Lucid Arena SDK like every cameras in our lineup. This SDK provides a comprehensive toolkit with multi-platform support, Windows 7, Windows 10, Linux Ubuntu and ARM version. Multiple language support, C, C++, .NET, C Sharp, Python, and support for various pixel format, including the Helios 3D time of flight camera. The SDK comes with the ArenaView GUI, easy to use, and with all the feature set required for evaluating and qualifying the cameras. This comes with a rich library of examples covering various use cases, camera configuration, streaming, triggers, events, acquisition, and example in either QT or MFC. And the driver is optimized for low CPU usage and high reliability. If the camera is to be used with third-party software, Lucid works closely with the key machine vision software vendors to make sure the camera is validated and compatible with those solutions. That's it for today. Thank you for joining this session. If you have any question, please reach out to us either through thinklucid.com or through this regional sales office in EMEA, Asia-Pacific or Greater China. Thank you.